I'm in Germany to meet some very clever robophiles and apparently a very clever robot. Just how clever, I'm here to find out. One of the great paradoxes that has been thrown up by research into robots is this. Robots and computers are very, very good at things we find very difficult, such as long division and VAT returns. But they're very, very bad at things we find extremely easy and instinctive, such as walking, talking and seeing. We tend not to think of seeing as a form of intelligence, but it most definitely is. It's not a simple matter of light going into your eyeballs. You also need your brain to process all the information so you know what things are, how far away they are, all that sort of thing. And we tend to forget that as children, human beings learn to see. And similarly, robots, such as my old mate Asimo here, must learn to see as well. This Asimo is the smilier, smarter brother of the one I met at Disneyland. It looks at the world through two camera eyes. We interpret these images as a man waving. But to begin with, Asimo can't interpret anything at all. Professor Kerner here may as well be a psychedelic swirl of digital rubbish. So, Professor, um, Asimo is just an uncomprehending box of electronics. So how do you make him look and learn? <laughs> well, uh, we start uh, teaching Asimo to see just the way a baby ex starts to explore the world. So if you put an object uh, close to uh, the baby in its reaching distance, the baby immediately attends to, tries to fixate it or to grasp it. So uh, going close to his grasping and reaching distance, yep shows him this is an important object and uh, he should try to attend to fixate. So he's, so he's, so, he's locked on target? Yes. Sort of thing. Uh, as long as you are in uh, this uh, close distance, in this reaching distance, uh, the robot will try to keep interaction because yep. uh, any object which is in this reaching distance is very important for him. So if I walk over there... Then he will lose interest in you. As indeed he has. Well, that's right. a very familiar sensation. Yeah. We also can use acoustic cues, uh, so uh, calling Asimo to uh, raise his attention. Asimo, look at me. Oh, there you go. All right, mate. Once we have Asimo's attention with an object, he can have a go at identifying what it is. Now, he's already learned about a hundred different things. I've got some of them here, I'm going to try them out. And this, incidentally, is merely because his ears aren't really good enough for the voice stuff over a distance. This is a direct tap into his brain. Anyway, Azimo. Toy duck. Yes, that is correct. It is a toy duck. Next. I want Asimo to learn something new. I've brought along two objects for him to identify. One is his grandpa from the 1950s, and the other is a Mini Cooper, the British one. So, he's never seen these before. He's learning these from scratch. So let's see what he makes of this. Asimo. Unknown object. Grandpa. Grandpa, say, yes, this is correct, or yeah. no, this is wrong. Yes, this is correct. OK. That means he's learned it. I will try that out later on. I'll go back with Grandpa and we'll see if he remembers who he is. Next, the Mini Cooper. Asimo. Pay attention, it's one of the most important small cars in history. Baby toy car. Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. OK. Right. Now let us see if the lad can remember Grandpa. Asimo. Grandpa. <laughs> 
And now, it's not a toy car, remember? It's now a Mini Cooper. As you move. Mini Cooper. Precocious little brat, isn't he? Good. But what Asimo was about to do next was the really clever stuff. First, Dr. Gurick taught him to recognise an ordinary chair. Learn what this flat thing is. But this time, Asimo is not just learning the shape. It's looking at certain generic properties. The chair's flat, a certain height off the floor, and so on. And once Asimo's got it, he is to nod. We then showed it an office stool. Now we can see it's a type of chair. But it's nothing like the shape of the first one. So will Asimo recognise it as a chair? So he's nodding, saying yes, he recognises that as a chair. Yeah. And just to make sure it wasn't cheating, I got them to show it a table and ask if that was a chair. It's not fooled. You saw? Yeah. Shaking. That's very good. Hold on a minute. What you've just seen is a machine making a judgement. Asimo's identified an object it's never seen before by recognising its features and working out that these qualify it as a chair. This is an interpretative skill at a very, very basic level, yes. but it is that rather than mere recognition. It's not shapes in slots again, it's, it's a bit of thought. Yes, so it's basically towards some understanding of the concept of the meaning of things rather than just their appearance. Right, so is this the beginnings of genuine intelligence rather than simply programming? We are targeting for this, yes. How long until he takes over the world? Uh, I don't think this will happen. So... I'm not so sure. I thought this was a pretty impressive glimpse of artificial intelligence and the potential is mind-bending. If you can program a machine to think for itself, could you ever program a machine to have imagination like we do? In my opinion, there is a good way of putting this to the test. <laughs> 